correct? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, you're doing great. Good, good, good to see you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, welcome back. It's Back to the Basics. I'm Sean Barr, and at Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today, we're talking about hyperconverged, mashing everything together, and making it work. Let's go! All right, so we're back and we are talking hyperconverged. Before we jump into hyperconverged and why you'd want it and how I should consider it, let's talk a little bit about how we got here. The idea behind converge is basically taking two things and having them leverage one. So an example would be when we had traditional storage networks like Fiber Channel and we move those to FCOE or iSCSI. So we're basically leveraging the same network infrastructure to support both data communications to the SAN and data communications to the network. That's an example of Converge. With hyperconverge, what we've done is we've taken the SAN component that was separated and combined it with the server component. So essentially we've got servers, memory, storage, compute, network, all of those things in a single box and all stitched together with software. That is hyperconverge. So if you're considering moving to hyperconverge, here are some of the things to think about. So you've got some additional storage capability or storage component, a SAN in your environment. You've got your compute infrastructure. You've got your hypervisor. All of those things work today and are pretty efficient at doing what they do. So when you move to hyperconverge, essentially what you're doing is you're taking the storage node and you're putting it with your compute infrastructure. So making that transition can be costly up front because you're either leaving your SAN behind or you've got a migration strategy. So depending on the size of your environment, you're probably considering migrating. So starting out with maybe three nodes on the hyperconverged infrastructure, moving some workloads there originally, and then as the infrastructure, the legacy infrastructure ages out, building that hyperconverged infrastructure larger and larger. Now the benefits of hyperconverged are essentially you have a single point of management depending on what architecture you use, but it's getting that management down to one point of management for your entire infrastructure. The trade-offs are really cost. So hyperconverged can be a lot more expensive than traditional infrastructure because you're paying for the hyperconverged software. Essentially the SAN software, the cost of the SAN is moving into your compute infrastructure infrastructure. Additionally, you don't have the dynamic capability of growing storage significantly without growing your compute base. Depending on what you're doing, that may not be a good option for you. If you're not growing your infrastructure at a rapid pace, hyperconverge may not make sense from a dollar's perspective. So those are all things to consider when you're looking at hyperconverge. If I said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'd love to know more about that, leave a comment, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Back to the Basics. Thanks for watching.